Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video we're going to be covering an electric commuter scooter with full suspension that's got some pretty interesting features at a price point that won't break the bank. So if you're in the market for an electric commuter scooter, stay tuned because we're going to be jumping into the details right now. All right, so the scooter that we're gonna be looking at today is the Richter S9, which is a single motor commuter scooter, which Richter claims to go upwards of 25 miles an hour and up to a maximum theoretical range of 40 miles, which really puts it in that sweet spot for electric commuter scooters. Now, Richter did reach out to me over the last couple weeks asking if I'd be open to reviewing their new scooter. And after doing some research, looking at some preliminary specs, uh, as well as some of the key features, I decided absolutely, let's take a look at this scooter. So we've got the scooter with us today we're gonna pop this box open and see what's inside all right so in the box of course we've got the s9 scooter uh, the handlebar will need some assembly and of course Richter does include uh, the hex bolt as well as the allen key that will allow us to attach uh, the stem and handlebar assembly together uh, of course we've got our instruction manual and then we've got our charger now this scooter does have a 15.6 amp hour battery uh, and the charger that comes with this scooter, which looks like a nice one, it's got some texture to it, is a three amp charger. So we're looking at about a five hour charging time on the S9. I'm gonna go ahead and get the handlebar assembly attached to the stem, and then we'll take a quick tour of the scooter. All right, so we went ahead and got the handlebar assembly attached to the stem. It was actually really easy. It's actually two bolts on either side, as well as two bolts on the back, and you're good to go. I went ahead and unfolded the stem and I'll take you in for a closer look at the stem locking assembly as well as all the features on this scooter. So the stem folding and locking mechanism is actually pretty simple on this scooter. You simply push the button back here, this folds down and that allows you to fold uh, the stem down and you can actually lock it into the deck of the scooter for easy portability. Uh, and you can simply unlatch it from the back, lift it back up and lock the stem in place and you're good to go. All right, so now for a quick tour of this scooter, we will start up front and we will work our way back. And then of course, up top to our handlebar and control assembly, as well as the LCD display, display and all the functions up there. But to start this here, of course, is our stem and our stem locking mechanism, which we just went over. As we work our way down, we can see we've got our reflector here up front, which is great for night visibility. And this scooter does have a dual fork front suspension, which is great for riding off the beaten path or on bumpy, uneven terrain. Does a really good job of absorbing that impact. And of course, we'll be putting that to the test. Now, standard out of the box is a pre-installed front and rear fender, as well as 10 inch pneumatic tires. Uh, and front and rear manual disc brakes. Now, if we work our way back, of course, we've got our charging port here, uh, which has got some rubber to help with the water tightness. And as we work our way down, you'll see we've got our kickstand assembly, which looks pretty rugged. We'll see what it, uh, how it performs in the real world. And as we work our way back up here, we've actually got a place for a key. And what this does, and this is one of the exciting features about this scooter, is it actually lifts up and allows you to remove this battery, which is huge. If you wanna bring it inside, charge it uh, while you monitor it, great. You can also charge it while it's installed here on the scooter. This also gives you the ability to have multiple battery packs. So once one battery pack runs out, you can swap in another one and keep on riding. So really nice to see uh, that kind of feature in a scooter at this price point. Now, as we work our way back, you'll see this does have a kick plate of sorts uh, with the latching mechanism for the stem. Now it is a kind of awkward place for this latching mechanism to be located because it is on that kick plate, but I think this kick plate is more design than function. Uh, there is some room for your foot on here, uh, but I think most of your you know, standing position will be on the main part of this deck, which is pretty long. It looks pretty wide. We'll see how it is uh, to actually ride on this. Now, as we work our way back, you'll see that this thing has actually got dual rear suspension as well, connected to the kick plate, uh, as well as the swing arms there. Uh, you've got, of course, that pre-installed rear fender, uh, the rear disc brake assembly. And what I'm really excited about on this scooter is it's actually got turn signals in the back here on both sides. So we'll turn the lights down here in a moment, power on the scooter, see what that looks like. But it's nice to see those uh, turn signals in a really visible area. You've also got some reflectors on either side, as well as a rear uh, tail light and brake light combo. Now, in terms of the motor on this scooter, it's actually 500 watts of nominal power. So it's a 500 watt 
brushless motor that can propel this scooter at up to you know 25 miles an hour so of course we'll be testing that out uh, once we get this charged up and take it out to ride all right so taking you up top here right under the handlebar mechanism you've actually got a headlight and on either side of the scooter you've actually got these turn signal indicators up front and up top which is really nice to see uh, you've also got your brake handles here on the left and right uh, those control the manual disc brakes on the front and rear of the scooter. Uh, you've also got this integrated manual bell, so that's how it sounds like if you're interested in that. Uh, definitely going to be heard by people uh, when you use that. Uh, here you've got some uh, turn signal indicators for left and right. We'll power on the scooter, see what that looks like. And then of course you've got your LCD screen here up top uh, with a single power button here, which is also a multifunction button for switching through the drive modes. Uh, here you've got a latching mechanism uh, for the folding portion of this scooter when you need to fold it up and transport it. And then of course you've got your thumb throttle uh, for powering uh, the scooter forward. Here we've got our LCD screen. You simply short press to turn the scooter on uh, and you can switch between drive modes by simply clicking this button. So you've got Eco, you've got Drive, and you've got Sport, which is the fastest riding setting. Now if you double click on this, it'll actually turn the headlights on and that headlight looks like this so of course we'll be testing that out on some night rides you've also got your turn signal so if i hit my left turn signal you can see the turn signal there you can also see the turn signal in the rear and of course we switch it to the right side you've got a turn signal there and you've got your back turn signal here now when i hit the brakes you've also got a brake light which is really nice to have and that works when you pull the brake lever on both the left and the right sides so if you're curious what this scooter looks like in a folded state, it's pretty simple. Just unlatch this, lock it into place, and now it's folded, and you can go ahead and lift this up. Now this scooter does weigh 54 pounds, which is basically around uh, the average weight for many commuter scooters. Now a couple final things I want to mention about this scooter before we go test this thing out is that it does have a maximum rider weight of 265 pounds or 120 kilograms. It also has a water resistance and dust resistance rating of IPX5. So riding around in some wet conditions shouldn't be a problem at all whatsoever for the scooter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this beast charged up and tomorrow morning we'll take this out for a spin, see how it does. Out of the box, the Richter S9 is very nimble. Acceleration is on point and the scooter feels very comfortable at speed. The handlebar is the perfect height for me, allowing for solid control when taking tighter turns. The S9 also has surprisingly good brakes, allowing me to not only come to a complete stop in a short distance, but come to one in a controlled manner. Let's dive deeper into those brakes. So, the Richter S9 not only comes with front and rear disc brakes, but it also comes equipped with electronic ABS. That means that when you apply the brakes hard, the scooter rapidly pumps the electronic brake, which helps prevent the rear wheel from locking up, resulting in more stable deceleration. Even in wet conditions, the brakes on the S9 are surprisingly effective. All I can say is that after my experience with these brakes, ABS is near the top of my list for future scooters. Now, speaking of wet conditions, let's talk about water resistance. The S9 has been rated at an IPX5 water resistance rating, meaning it can withstand low pressure water jets as well as splashes and rain. I was able to test this out on one of the relatively rare days where it actually rains here in the Phoenix area, and I rode this scooter in rainy conditions on back-to-back -back days, even riding through small puddles with zero impact to the scooter. So, if you're anticipating using the S9 in rainy conditions, just know that you've got a solid water resistance rating backing you up. In terms of range, Richter lists the max theoretical range for the S9 at approximately 40 miles. Keep in mind that range estimates are impacted by a variety of factors, including rider weight, riding surface, speed, incline, and a host of other factors. In the real world, you can expect a lower range figure, typically at 50 to 60% of the max theoretical range. I tested the S9 on the bike trails in Tempe, Arizona in sport mode at 22 miles an hour, which is three miles an hour short of the max speed. And at this speed, I was able to get just over 20 miles of range after lots of stop and go riding, several steep inclines, as well as weighing in with gear at 205 pounds. Now, 
if I were to ride in eco mode or drive mode, I would get much closer to that 40 mile theoretical max, but I wouldn't have had as much fun riding at those speeds. Now, one thing I want to mention is that this scooter is able to maintain over 20 miles an hour, even when the battery is at 20%. The only difference here is that acceleration is noticeably lower at this level, which is to be expected with any scooter at those battery levels. Speaking of speed, Richter says that out of the box, the S9 will go upwards of 25 miles an hour. In my testing, I was able to get the scooter up to 24 miles an hour on relatively windless days on level ground. Lighter riders should have no problem hitting the top rated speed of 25 miles an hour. The S9 comes with three primary driving modes, Eco, Drive, and Sport. Eco has a top speed of 6 miles an hour, Drive has a top speed of 9 miles an hour, and Sport has a max speed out of the box of 15 miles an hour, which can be unlocked to 25 miles an hour using the companion app. This scooter also has cruise control, which you have to enable in the app, but once enabled, uh, you can actually set cruise speeds at the top of each of the drive modes by pressing and holding the throttle for more than five seconds. Now, one thing that many scooter riders look for is hill climbing ability. For these tests, I take all of my scooters to South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. The Richter S9 was able to scale 1,214 feet in elevation gain over approximately 12 miles. Now, the scooter handled most of the mountain with ease, but did slow down to about three miles an hour on the steepest section, which is similar to other commuter scooters I've tested in the same area. Another thing to note is that with all scooters, battery consumption goes up dramatically when climbing steep inclines over extended periods of time. So if you plan on riding uphill for many miles, just know that your range will be considerably lower, so plan ahead. I also had the opportunity to test the S9 on an incline in a parking garage, and it handled the steep climb reasonably well. Overall, this scooter should be able to handle most light to moderate hills with ease. In terms of suspension, the Richter S9 comes equipped with dual coil spring suspension in the front and the rear. Out of the box, the suspension is a bit stiff, but it does soften up as you ride it. I found that it handles bumps in the road and gaps in the sidewalk with ease. Because it has suspension, you can take this scooter off the beaten path on dirt and gravel surfaces. I would just avoid any hardcore off-roading as this scooter is meant to be primarily a commuter scooter. If you do find yourself riding on dirt paths or in wet conditions, the S9 does come equipped with mud guards in the front and the rear to keep the elements off your clothes. If you've never ridden a scooter with suspension, all I can say is that having it is 100% worth it. When it comes to lighting, the Richter S9 comes equipped with a headlight, a taillight and brake light combo, as well as front and rear turn signals. It also has a front reflector and two reflectors on either side of the rear fender. The rear turn signals are exceptionally bright, making them very easy to see at night. The front signals are also visible at night, just not as bright as the rear lights. In terms of the headlight, Richter did equip the scooter with a light that casts a whitish blue beam, which I find to be more effective than your typical yellow lights. If you do plan to ride a lot at night, however, I do suggest picking up a handlebar mounted light for extra visibility, especially if you're going to be driving fast. Now, one thing that I really like about this scooter is that it comes with a companion app. The Richter app allows you to view things like estimated mileage, battery charge, and distance traveled. It also allows you to change the max speed of sport mode to 25 miles an hour. You also have the ability to enable cruise control, lock the motor for security, update the firmware, view the odometer, as well as a host of other functions. Having an app allows for more granular control of the scooter, opening up a wide array of customizations. So, for the things that I absolutely love about this scooter, the number one thing on my list is going to have to be the electronic ABS. It is an absolute game changer when it comes to braking, and I wish more scooters have these as a standard feature. The second thing on my list is the removable battery. Now, if you're like me, I like to monitor my batteries when I charge them for safety reasons. So with the Richter S9, I can simply park my scooter in the garage, pop the battery out, bring it inside, charge it up where I can monitor it. This is also a huge advantage if let's say you're commuting to work, they don't allow you to bring the scooter in, you can still pop the battery out, charge it indoors, juice it up so that you can get back home. The third major thing that I like about this scooter is gonna have to be the front and rear turn signals. Now, a lot of commuter scooters out there have the turn signals mounted on the ends of the handlebars. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that if you've got a wider grip, there's a good chance you can end up covering those signals reducing their effectiveness. With the Richter S9, those signals are actually mounted below the handlebar so that they're out of the way of your hands when riding. Now, in terms of things that I wasn't so excited about, the number one on my list has to be the latch location on the kick plate. 
I feel like there could be something that could be folded out of the way, make it a little bit easier. Uh, but with this scooter, uh, that latch is directly on the kick plate. So when you want to put your foot back there, you do have to worry about that. But the good news here is that the deck is long and it's also really wide compared to some other commuter scooters. So foot position isn't an issue. The second thing on my list is gonna be the brightness of the front turn signals. The rear turn signals are super bright. I think the front ones can be made a little bit brighter. I mean, they're completely visible at night, but it would be nice to see them as bright as the rear turn signals. And the last thing on my list is gonna be the stiffness of the suspension out of the box. As you ride the scooter, it does soften up. And I will say that having a suspension is a million percent better than not having a suspension. If you've never ridden a scooter with a suspension, in my opinion, it is an absolute game changer. Overall, I'm very happy with the Richter S9. It's a zippy scooter with plenty of power for everyday commuting. Having features like removable batteries, front and rear turn signals, full suspension, as well as app connectivity, give this scooter a premium feel at a fair price. It also has a relatively wide deck, which makes standing on this scooter very comfortable. It currently sells for $799, and if you use the link and the coupon code in the description below, you can get an even better deal. So what do you think of the Richter S9? Questions, comments, pros, cons, let me know in the comments below. And if this content was helpful for you, consider liking and subscribing as I release this type of content on a weekly and bi-weekly basis. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.